Tell me, uh, tell me your uh, Lefty Gunplay story. He dips in the car and he's like, oh yeah, homegirl, you, you, you rap? He's like, I bet I rap better than you. When people say like, they're gonna cry, like when they hear something like, that's what I was doing. Like when I wrote, like I'm focusing on and just giving people consistent music, not so much gaps in between. Is that ever a struggle for you? Like, you know, you're into girls, your sexuality oh. and stuff like that. What's poppin'? It's your boy Moses, aka Nomo, chilling right here inside the Lit Outlet podcast. Got a very special guest in the building. I got. And Jules, uh, 626. We're well, from the 626. Grew up in San Gabriel Valley. That's where the 626 comes from for sure. As you said specifically, independent artists, hip hop, I guess, rap, somewhat RB, I guess you could say. You know, okay. some, but it's good to be here. Thank you. I appreciate it for having me. Yeah, no problem. Uh, welcome to Southgate. The first and last time you're probably ever going to be in Southgate because the only time fools pull up to Southgate is to be in the Lit Out of the Podcast. Uh, you been to Southgate before? Um, Yeah, probably passing by, but actually like kicking it over here, never really, to okay. be honest. That's yeah. dope. First time right here. The first time ever in Southgate with the Lit Out of the Podcast. Yep. Appreciate it. Um, definitely um, want to give you like your flowers as far as doing music, you know, independently. Uh, you've been known for, to be someone that has like good music, good bars and stuff like that. So we're definitely going to dive into all the music and all your, your, you know, your career in the, in the, in the entertainment business. But I definitely want to jump in in the beginning. Okay. So, so yeah. Where were you born? Where are you from? Where are your parents from? Give me all that stuff. Um, so I was born uh, in West Covina pretty much, but I grew up mainly in Azusa. Okay. I moved around. Um, I moved around a lot, actually. But when it comes to, you know, where's home, for sure it would be Azusa. Um, but yeah, I lived in the Bay Area for a little chunk of time for like six, seven years. So that was a big part of, um, that's actually still a big part of me. Um, I feel like from living there and kind of the, the way they do stuff in the Bay Area compared to LA, you know, I kind of got the best of, of both worlds. It's actually why I always say, hella and it's it's when i say hecka people are like you know <laughs> but like in the bay area you know it's like funny but um you kind of like tell when someone says hecka you're like hecka you know maybe hella you'll catch but for the most part but little things like that i guess um texas i remember i lived in el paso but yeah like i said mainly azusa um my both my parents lived there as well um i lived in the bay area because my dad was over there but mainly, for the most part, from what I know, everybody kind of originated from Azusa and just kind of scattered wherever. But, um, yeah, so both of my parents are from there, too. Okay. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, you know, being in the music industry, you know, especially from being, like, in urban cities, like, even Azusa is an urban city, South is an urban city, just L.A. in general, right? Um, <clears throat> it's kind of tough to ask somebody, like, when you fell in love with, like, music or hip-hop because it's kind of, like, ingrained in the culture where we grew up. But what are your, like, earliest memories of music? What's poppin'? It's your boy Moses. We're gonna take in a second from this episode to bring you a word from our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by us, The Lit Outlet. The best way to support the channel is to like, comment, subscribe on every episode. Don't forget the reels on Instagram. Don't forget the shorts on YouTube. Make sure you guys like and comment on everything you see from The Lit Outlet. Also, another big major way you can support the channel is to join our Patreon. The link is down below in the description. You can keep the channel alive by pledging $1 every month. You can also do $3, $5, $10, $20, $20. but all I'm asking if you're a lit and you're enjoying the content to at least join our patreon for a dollar a month another way you can support the channel is to buy some merch we got hoodies for 40 and we got t-shirts with this logo for 25 bucks if you want to support the channel those are the best ways but also if you want to just keep enjoying the content for free you can do that too i don't mind so i want to say thank you to all of our ladies who are watching liking subscribing to all of our content here now let's get back to the show um music for sure Living in Azusa when, um, with my mom. Um, my dad's side definitely has a lot of influence too, just, just as equal. But growing up from when I was like younger, me and my brother used to do some like ridiculous ass shit. We used to like go and set up like chairs, like where we found all these chairs, because some of them didn't even belong to like my grandma, like her house, like they weren't even chairs there. So I don't know where we found them, but we would like set them up and like, you know, do like performances to like, you know, in sync, like back in the day, like, bop, bop, you know, like some <laughs> yeah. ridiculous, or like, you know, even Whitney Houston, Heartbreak Hotel, or, you know, Fantasy, like Mariah Carey, like Lauren Hill and the Fugees, um, yeah, Michael Jackson, like, we used to do, like, all out, just performances that me and my brother just, like, rehearsed throughout the day, and we're like, whoever was there, like, poor people, but, 
They were like, we were like, <laughs> sit down, we're gonna perform this for you, us two, by ourselves. We just did this, you know. <laughs> so it was always, I like, I, we used to always have my mom cracking up, you know. She was a trooper. She definitely went out there and watched however the performance was, you know. So be it. But for sure, that's what I remember. Like always that, and then. Yeah, or like, you know the CDs that, like, when you used to get the album cover but had all the lyrics? Mm hmm Dude, I'm remembering all the lyrics if I have that page. It was your older brother or younger brother? Yeah, my older brother. Okay, because I have older sisters, so I remember one time for summer, I was like six or seven, and NSYNC was really popping, right? And my sister was an NSYNC fan, so, you know, by proxy, I had to be an NSYNC fan too, right? Because my Got sister, you, you know, was my, my older sister. We also did too, like, for the whole summer, we were training this performance, and we had to make our parents watch it, so... <laughs> I can relate with that, you know, trying to be, uh, I guess uh, that kind of also shows to like, you've always wanted to kind of be into, in the entertainment business, but just didn't know exactly what, right? Yeah, it definitely didn't. Like, I felt like I always had like some hidden talent, but like it was just meant to stay hidden, you know, like yeah. it's funny, but um, yeah, or like even 50 Cent, like Get Richard Die Trying, like 21 Questions or like all that, like, I don't know, Candy Shop, Window, sh window Shop or whatever the fuck it's called, but yeah, that's Ja Rule and Ashanti. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can go on and on, but yeah, that's if I remember music young, those are the music and the songs that I could have like replay over and over again, you know? Yeah. What so. about like uh, growing up in Azusa? Like, how was that? Um, well, I guess your time there, because you, like you said, you bounced around. Yeah, like, but like, you know, it's always been whatever stage, whether it was like, you know, growing up there, like when I was younger. Um, I don't know. I'm really grateful that I moved around. Not to say anything, but I feel like people in, um, you can really get caught in like just being in Azusa, staying in Azusa forever, you know? And that's not, that's not a bad thing at all. I wouldn't mind, you know, you know, whether it was like when I was older, you know, and just like living there, but just staying there. And it's kind of like, I feel very tradition and very norm to like, you have your parents on like a house and then like, you li like you live there, which is like cool, and then like you know you know God forbid something happened to them, but then like you take over like that, you know. But um, yeah, so being able to like move around was was cool. I feel like I'd be honestly, yo, know, when I was younger, like I didn't really see like a lot of ethnicities besides just like Mexican people. You feel me? Same. So like I didn't like low key I was kind of ignorant. Like when I moved to like the Bay Area, like I was like, what the fuck, like. It's like, you know, not only just Mexicans, but there's like white, but there's like different types of white people. There's people from like, you know, Middle Eastern countries, like Asian people. Like, like I remember my best friend at that time, his name was like, I mean, his ethnicity was like a, a Syrian. Oh, shit. Yeah, like, I remember there was some girl in my class, Marina. I won't say her last name, though, because it was like hell down, But she was from like Yugoslavia. Like, her family was like from Yugoslavia. So I was just like, what? Like, I'm so confused. I was just so, like, used to hearing, like, Jalisco, you know, yeah. like, all this shit, like, you know, but it was, um, yeah, it, it didn't, it's kind of like, I guess, a little Mexico, you know, yeah. you're right, where, right where I'm at also. Um, so it was very, like, it was dope, don't get me wrong. It's definitely a city, too, where, like, all the kids be playing in the street, even though I don't know if they should, right. without supervision, but, you know, kind of, Kind of is the city where you just kind of learn on your own. Your parents like go outside, get your ass home before it's dark. I mean, you know, so it was fun. It was fun for sure. Um, just very, very norm, like every day, kind of the same, you know, deal with the same type of shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who was Jules as a kid? Oh my God. Jules as a kid, Jules now. Okay. Everybody would be like shaking their head. I was playing, but <laughs> um, I was nuts. I was like, I have. Five other siblings, um, but me and my older brother that I was talking about, we ha have the same, we all share the same mom. We have the same mom and dad, which doesn't, it doesn't make any difference. Um, they're all equally my siblings. I hate when people say that, like, although you have sister, but no, nigga, they're my brother and sister. What the fuck, like, you know? Yeah. Um, but we were, we were, me and my older brother were like, kind of always together I guess you know more more or less you could say um so growing up with him as my older brother and like he did not definitely didn't treat me he treated me more like a little brother which was I mean 
it was cool to some extent, but um, it definitely didn't have it like easy, I could say, from anyone. My mom was, you know, was kind of tough also, but I ran a, I would just run a, run amok. I would just like to always do the opposite for some reason of what somebody told me to do, but I definitely learned the hard way in some of those situations. I definitely was a wild child for sure. My mom was watching this. She's going to be like, oh, yeah, she's telling the truth. You know? Yeah. Like, how old are you when you get into, like, trouble? Was it, like, the school stuff or, like, outside the street getting in trouble? What kind of trouble were you finding yourself in? Hmm. So I remember before I moved with my dad in sixth grade, <laughs> I lived with just my nana by, my, by, her, by herself because my mom, you know, was, you know, with my brothers and sisters' dad, you know, and she's only been literally with my dad and my brother and sister's dad, you know, so I didn't actually really see her with my dad, but with, with their dad, yeah. Um, but I was living with my nana by, by, by herself, <laughs> just me and her, and she's like super old school, like Mexican, like, you know, I really didn't do shit. Like her, like our daily thing was like, she picked me up from school in like this big ass Roadmaster Buick, like huge as fuck. She'd be driving with the steering wheel, like right up against her chest. <laughs> pick me up like there's never time when like all the cars are lined up outside outside the school she's gonna be the first she's gonna be either the first one or like <laughs> the person they already told to go because she was in line too too early but she was always right there and like you know if we didn't go straight home which was like right next to the school like right after we were gonna go we were gonna go out, which meant running errands, which meant paying the bills, which I had to go inside, I had to go, I had to do all the stress of getting the receipt, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, doing all that. So I didn't really have, like when I was with her, like I'm not gonna, you know, harp on it, but she was tough, you know, she wasn't like the nicest, but I didn't really get to do a lot, you know, she didn't really, that wasn't really like, like to her, it was just like, what do you mean you're gonna go to your friend's house, you know? Yeah. Like, so when I wasn't with her, it was like, shit, I'm just gonna get in however I can. So I remember I got, sus oh my God, I got suspended in fifth grade with, I never forget, it, like their names and everything. Um, but we got suspended for doing some stupid shit, like in fifth grade, and my grandma had to come. And then, like, right after that, I just remember. I moved with my dad shortly after. And then I went from, you know, Azusa to living like, you know, like just suburban ass area, like Almaden Valley, like San Jose. Like I was like, what the fuck? You know, like this is crazy. And it's like, not, no, like I got five on him. My parents gave me a couple of bucks. It's like, oh, I got 50 bucks. Like I got a hundred bucks, you know? So right away, I don't know how there wasn't very many, but I gravitated towards all like the bad kids. like every single one somehow and we we're just all one big group of just badass kids you know <laughs> so like i got my first referral like in sixth grade for throwing some paper i remember at the back of a, some student and then after that just <laughs> downhill <laughs> yeah because over there like i used to get arrested like for dumb dumb stuff like you know trying to steal shit going in people's garages and fucking having bad luck and there being like an off-duty cop of like oh, bro. <laughs> you know then like following me but they used to like they used to like arrest you, right? But they used to just like literally write you a ticket. And if you can call literally any parent, like anybody who's literally a parent can come meet them where you're at getting arrested. And they just give you a ticket and you go. So to me, I was just like, all right, this is how it is. Until I moved back over uh, to Azusa and then, no, that's it's real who, quick. Who would you call to come get you? Whoever that wasn't my dad. <laughs> <laughs> the, whoever, if you weren't my dad, uh, that, was, that was who I was calling, but. I remember I got lucky. My cousin probably laughed, but she moved with us for a little bit. She came from Las Vegas, and she was, like, my scapegoat. Nice. I was, like, I'm on, my dad used to call it restriction, and I was always on restriction. Like, mm -hmm. that was, like, 24-7, 365 days out of the year for sure. Just on restriction. Got caught smoking weed, like, super young and the worst way, to the stupidest way. But, like, after that, my dad was, like, nope. <laughs> I mean, you're not getting shit for me. Then I learned, and then I got my cell, first cell phone, like the little Nokia, and then my brother taught me how to text. I was like, what's a text? That's when they didn't even have unlimited. Growing up the bill, the bill used to come in like those big old like folders, like type like envelopes. I was just fucking up. Just like <laughs> doing the most, like running away. Like I was just wild, wild child. 
still could could be that way but well were you like acting up or like running away because you thought it was fun or like were you misunderstood like what was the thing going through um, your head i was like kind of like when i lived with my dad like we had tried it i remember like years like prior like me and my brother were always together and then like my brother kind of liked it and like stayed you know and then, and then we kind of like, separated i went with my mom in texas for like a year that didn't work out um and you know i got you know, not dumped, but back at my grandma's, pretty much. You know, it's always a place to go. That's where everybody would dump their kids, actually. <laughs> All my cousins and shit, like, my grandma has three kids, but there's, like, 14 of us. Damn. Yeah. I don't know. My, I don't know. They're still, still going. I know my mom's done. I don't know. But, yeah. Who knows? My uncles, they might still be, be going. But there's there's a, there's 14 of us. So, during summers, it was, like, nuts. Um, but, yeah, like... I, I don't know really what it really what it was I I feel like I went through like a lot of things you know quietly you know when I live with my grandma um, there's a lot of things that like I kind of experienced in like the like living in Azusa and my grandma would always have like random people coming in and, like working in the house and like doing all this shit and like I'd always have to like I'd always just kind of have to be like on my own and have to deal with like people and talking to people and like doing doing the most. So like when I kind of live with my dad, I felt like like in a lot of times, like certain things that I went through, I was kind of um, I kind of rebel against him because I kind of like blamed him for a lot, you know, and that had to do with like my grandma always putting things like low key in my head and always telling me things about like my parents, which thankfully I'm like grown enough and enough like you know i know it had to separate the two and like i'm glad i'm not like stringing my violin and be like poor me you know because mm. it's things that are based off of somebody else and i had to like, see for myself and like both my parents like i love both my parents like they're totally like you know feed like my character in totally two different ways but they're just such a such a balance but unfortunately when i was younger you know i just was Super like, oh, you know, wherever I'm at in life, like, I got here on my own, like, I didn't need you, like, so I went with him, it was, he worked a lot, and I went from constantly at, you know, home with my grandma where she didn't go anywhere, you know, and if I did, I went with her, um, to, to having my dad, like, never home, because he just always worked long hours, where so I was like, so I could just go outside, like, <laughs> and after that, it was over, like, experimenting with drugs and um like I said in suburban, I probably had more friends die from the Bay Area living in a quote-unquote richer area than homies that have you know passed away over here to be honest a lot of like drug overdoses and suicides and like stuff like that everybody's like parent is like a closet this or closet alcoholic or closet this but like when they show face it's like you know yeah so um, it was just a bad, bad combination for where I was at. It was just too much freedom, for sure. And I didn't, obviously did not know how to handle it, but. Uh, you know, off camera, we're talking a little bit about, like, you know, relationships and you having, like, you know, you're talking about, you know, exes and stuff like that. Like, did you, was that ever a struggle for you? Like, finding out or, like, knowing that you were, you know, you're into girls, your oh. sexuality and stuff like that? No, I was, I was lucky to where, like, Super young, so that's another thing. So my grandma has three kids, right? So my older uncle, his first born daughter, she's she's gay. My cousin's gay, <laughs> and then I'm my mom's first born daughter. I'm gay, and then my younger uncle, my little cousins are too small, so we don't know. Um, I don't really think the first one. I think the second one, maybe. Sorry, Theo. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, but like so, kind of my cousin, like kind of like helped in the sense where she kind of like paved the way where it wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't wasn't like weird because I, I know like growing growing up I would kind of hear like like not that it was bad but kind of hear about where my my older cousin was and like in her you know trying to find herself stage so it was like the talk about it you know like and so it was like when it came to me you know it even my, my grandma like she's just totally 180 that's that's why I could our 360 180 is only halfway on <laughs> Um, but yeah, she, she completely changed, but I was never really scared. My mom really young was like able to like see that I was very good at writing her something opposed to coming out and 
saying things to her personally. She told me real young, if you need to tell me anything, if you ever need to express yourself to me, just write it down and just write me a letter, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, and besides that, I feel like everybody knew. I feel like I knew very young. Um, my brother, my older brother, that's what I was saying. Even though I grew up, you know, with him, I never really had it easy, you know? Um, he didn't treat me like, he treated me like his baby sister, but he didn't treat me like his baby sister at the same time, which I'm very grateful for. Um, but yeah, very young, and I never ever had issues. Honestly, I've never really had encounters. Obviously, I have people, and they want to throw like throw shit around, talk shit. But that's like minimal, you know. Someone's gonna always do that and just like attack like your exterior because they're lame. But right. when it comes to family, I'm like really blessed. I never had a hard like on either side. Um, yeah, my grandma, like I said, on my my dad's side, my grandma's a little bit more like like into church and stuff. So she for sure, it's kind of, kind of, don't, we don't really just talk about it. Okay. If I have a girlfriend, it's just my friend. Yeah. So I'm just like, sorry. You know? <laughs> so, um, you know, you did mention that your mom noticed that you were, uh, you were able to express yourself through like letters instead of like, you know, verbal. Um, do you think that helped you out in the long run as far as with your music, like being able to write music? Oh yeah. Like for sure. Um, I, like I said, with the. The CDs back in the day, I used to have, you know, like the lyrics in some of them. When you get like the album, like cover things. And I always, like word for word, even though it was already written on this CD, like the writing is super small, you know what I mean? So for some reason, it was always a thing. That's one thing my grandma did did do. She she like bought me a, a not cassette, like a CD player. But like, you know, my headphones and everything. And like, I remember she's the one that bought me my 50 Cent Get Richard Die Trying CD. And she bought it with the lyrics that had in, like, all the lyrics to every song that was in there. And I, for some reason, would like get them and copy them down word for word, like on my, you know, on a piece of paper. And I would remember it word for word. Like, and I would just be like in my room, just doing it by myself. You know what I mean? But my mom just always, so I'm around, I used to write like poems and stuff, like weird. Um, well, not weird, but kind of. But I feel like I was able to like, come in contact with a lot of words I really sh wouldn't be coming in contact with like by reading that. And it kind of molded like my understanding of things, I feel like. Even if I didn't really know the definition or like know what something meant, I could like tell by like the feeling of it because of like reading these CDs and like what's going on and, like, and what they're talking about. So it's kind of like the words and the like... The verbiage that they use, you kind of were able to, you know, well, I was. <laughs> I don't know, maybe everybody's different, but um, it like taught me, it made me like well rounded without even knowing it, you know. Um, but yeah, I feel like I was, my mom noticed that, like, she always just noticed that if I was gonna be doing something in writing for sure, whatever it, it would be, just writing or like just doodling on a piece of paper. Um, I feel like she, she just recognized that in me, like, real young. Yeah. And she just made that, you know, option available and made it open and it made it a lot easier because of probably a lot of things that maybe I wouldn't have told her altogether. Now I'm an open book with that lady. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, she, my mom was really dope at doing that, being able to, to tell. She's very, um, she's very like nurturing, like very, she definitely was a mom. She never let like anything happen to, to any of us. So we're always... If it came down to it, like, you know, we were always first. So she was, she was really good, I, especially having all of us. She, she knows us. She knew us all, like, the back of her hand. Uh, what was your first experience or what, what your earliest memory of, like, writing music down? Mm. Like, your own music. My own music? Well, I guess you would say, like, it would be the poems, right? So, um, or I just, or I just write. Like, I guess maybe it would be somewhat poetic if you would take it, but there would be a lot of, like, extra words, you know, like, as I would say, like when I'm writing a song, you know, I don't really like write music that way anymore. Um, um, there's obviously a lot of words I call like beefing up your bars, which like my homie, I remember um, my homie IMG told me that uh, one time and it's always like stuck with me. So it's pretty much like taking out those extra words and making sure you find like the exact like cadence. Kind of the same thing. I mean, at that time, I didn't know that I was writing music. You know, it's just like was like poetry, but um, super young. I mean... When I got the 50 Cent CD, I was for sure in elementary school. So fourth grade, fourth, 
third grade, maybe even, but really young. I mean, there's nothing to do. There's always a piece of paper and like a fucking pencil or something, you know, somebody's eyeliner. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what was the first time you recorded music? Uh, five years. 2000, at the end of 2019 or the end of 2018. Okay, so pretty recent. Yeah, yeah. I wish I would have dived into it like head on, but it's dummy just like hesitating and like just thinking it was like cliche, you know? Right. Like I'm not gonna be like I rap or like I could do that. Well, honestly, I didn't even rap when I when I first started music. I just like sang. I thought I did, and then the people I hang out with, they like had an open verse. Honestly, they I would like go to the studio and these fools would like always do like coke or something and then they could never finish a song and i didn't understand why they did that and like i was always right there like when i first started music i'd write like before i even came close to a mic like i had everything right now like every single thing like the whole like idea of going to the studio right and like not knowing what you're going to record i thought it was absolutely fucking ridiculous like why are you going to pay I was like, uh, yeah, I, pay for studio time, pay for the engineer, then I have anything written. Yeah, down. like you come out and you're like, we got a hook done. You're like, all right, for sure, you know, like a three hour session. Yeah. But, yeah like, That's like, hilarious. But yeah, so, um, yeah, freaking 2000, yeah, I would say like 2018. At the end of 2018 or 2019 might be the first time I actually recorded. Um, but yeah. Around, around that time, for sure. Uh, did like your experience, like your experience in the in the studio, or just writing down music or recording music? Like, was it pretty? Like, um, did you know it was something that you were gonna like, kind of like, that you want to do? Was it a positive experience? Was it like hard to get into? Like, how was your experience in the beginning with music? Um, it kept me inside, <laughs> um, but I realized it was. I would express so much in like a song from whatever I was feeling, you know, it was such a de-stressor to where, unless you're my ex, no, just fucking around. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, it's it's very hard to get me, you know, like upset, um, you know, or me to have outbursts, you know, like how I grew up, it was very passive aggressive. So, you know, uh, if I have a problem with you, I'm definitely not gonna tell you, cause why would you do that? You know, why would you tell a person you have a problem with, <laughs> that you have a problem with them? You can go tell, you know, somebody else and then, you know, somebody else tells somebody else. And then by the time, you know, it gets to that point where you just like had it because the person that you wanted to tell or should know doesn't know. So whatever issue just might keep going and then you just blow up off of something, you know, stupid, you right. know, like ridiculous. You know, like it, I used to always joke around and say because my grandma was on a corner house. Like if you never grew up like cussing, like or breaking shit or fucking <laughs> doing any of that, like, you'll walk in one side, like, of the house, because it's, like, on, like, one street, you know, and then, you like, you'll go out and exit the other, the other door on the opposite side of the house, and you'll be coming out, like, fuck, fuck, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, it just wasn't, like, me and my brother used to go out, it's so crazy, like, none of my younger siblings, any sibling after me, like, if anything, they'll punk me, like, I'm like, well, whatever, but, like, me and my older brother, like, I don't know, what the fuck, dude, he's, like, trying to, well, him mostly, <laughs> just kidding. But like, we used to like really go at it. And music, for example, and a lot of other different things, but music for sure, like, it it was, like I said, I was able to get so much off my chest, I could care less. And I started to realize that, yeah, maybe me in general, um, usually a lot of times I'd start fucking up again is when like, I'm, you know, walk away from music, which is something that for sure this year, I don't want, don't want, don't want to happen. Like, I mean, to be honest, I was like when all the my my singles were dropping like just a couple weeks ago, like one right after the other. I was like in jail for like <laughs> the last two weeks of one, but I was like, thank God, while I was in there, I was like, thank God, bro, I already got two two songs still coming out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like so, like I said, like yeah, I mean, not that trouble follows me. These situations and predicaments I put myself in, obviously my fault. But yeah, when it comes to like relationships and you know yelling and, and doing all that, it's just. It's just so, and besides the fact where like I love it, and besides that, I see the feeling that it gets gives other people. Like when people say like they're gonna cry, like when they hear something like that's what I was doing. Like when I fucking wrote that shit. Like when people say like they're trying to get hyped, like that's how I was like when I wrote it. So it's really cool to be able to like pass that on, and it just feels good. Like doesn't matter what somebody says, it's like 
this is what I want to do. Besides all the, like, fucking up and, like, besides all the, like, the hard shit, like, it's just what I want to do in general. Like, because I feel like when I'm doing it, like, there's nothing else. Nothing else matters. Like, you know, like, you obviously need to, I guess, when it comes to certain shit, if you're in a relationship, whatever, know how to balance your time. But no matter what, um, like, if it was there before you, shit, it's going to be there after you. You know what I mean? Like, so it's... It's when I, I I feel like when I walked away from it, like trouble can can come up, and I really realized that you know, um, some some people you know especially like family and stuff, um, like my my pops like you know it's it's kind of like not 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 like weird for sure. My dad's like supportive, but for sure I know like to him it would be like a hobby, and you just never ever see. Mm. ever so I know that there's like to some degree some people don't understand um but in a respectful way I don't really care you know because it it does me good regardless all around um so you have a new, a new song that just came out right uh what's the name of the song what's it about um it's called just some bars so one of my good friends he's also an artist um b42 um shout out to him he's like one of my like Best friends, though. best, 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 besties for. <laughs> but we have known each other for so long. Um, we actually met each other because we both were performing at, I don't know if you ever heard of her, but her name was like Por Vida, like Por Shorty, yeah. I don't know. She was like really, well, not to say she's not popping anymore. What the fuck? Let me back up. But um, at one time, like, there was just like this big buzz about her, you know? I think she would like originally dance or something. Um, I don't really know. Uh, she was cool, but somehow we like through a videographer that did one of my videos. Um, he like asked me to like if I want to perform at her birthday. So that's when um, me and this big guy fell in love over here. No, my <laughs> homie like he's he's so funny. Like I, at that point, I used to have like the same set of songs, right? And I had this song called like Superman, and it was. So so long. It was a singing song. It was so long. Like whenever I hear it now, it makes me cringe because it just drags on. But people, for some reason, love it. And it's a very soft. I always found that people, like guys, when I would perform this, they always like came up to me and like he did not look like the part of like you know we're like in South Central LA like you know like everybody has like a shaka or a pro club. <laughs> just kidding. Got big ass plugs. You know I'm like the, me and my homie are the only ones with like a jean jacket on. I'm like fuck. Like my bad dude. I didn't get the dress code. <laughs> <laughs> but it was cool as fuck. And he came up to me and uh, he liked the suit the Superman song. And I was just like you know that's 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 funny. And we kind of got connected then. And we how i know also he's a great friend is because we've been friends for so long and there's been obviously you know music right you know some people relationships friendships like like people get all mad and shit like at the end of the day like whatever you do it has nothing to say like with somebody's like more important or anything it's just like when that time comes when you're gonna drop something you make it right you don't force it you know what i mean and the thing that we have in common is like me and him have both learned that we said fuck going to the studio Fuck all the drama of like trying to go like to somebody else's studio and then get mad at you and then like you can't come <laughs> and then like whatever like we early on both like realized that and built like got our own studios and stuff like that so we're a lot like experimenting and learning and now we know so much both of us you know to when we were together we could just give each other back and forth so much knowledge um, and he showed me some beat the other day well like not the other day but. I have, a, I have a bad habit of saying that the other day, but it's not the other day. But um, like a week, it's barely like a week ago, honestly. About a week ago, he just was was gonna work on some beat while I was at his house, and then he's like, "If you want to jump on it," and he he writes for days, like he just has lyrics for fucking days in his phone. So when I when he when he went, he recorded his part. Like I'm still working or whatever, and then I look at the beat and I'm like, "Bro, you're like fucking halfway through the song. You're like literally verse and like halfway through the hook, you know." So he's like, I mean, I'm not really tripping, but the way he ended, it was like perfect, you know? And I was like, well, fuck it. What if I just pick it up and then just go to the end of the song? And then that's what we did. We just, that's why I just called just some bars and I just feel like it's fire. Like, you know, it's like two different, two different, like not really rap styles. Like we're both rapping, but you know, kind of the way we like come at things, you know, it's just literally just talking, not so much talking shit, but we're just kind of just, you know, 
just like kind of like strutting our stuff in the song just like you know we don't give a fuck what you think type shit you know like this is me and and i feel like it flows perfectly even though it's just two different verses long ass verses it's pretty dope so um yeah that's that um like you said drop friday so hopefully you know everybody fucks with it but i fuck with it yeah yeah um, you know, I, I feel like a lot of people growing up in urban urban cities or people that, you know, grew up uh, a certain way all gravitate to rap or hip hop or R&B and everyone has everyone I can admit that has a dream of becoming a rapper like it would be cool to be rich and famous and off music and stuff like that. You know, is in your opinion, is the rap game or the music industry as cool and as glamorous as you thought it would be? Or is it yeah. is it completely different than you assumed before you got no, into it's it? It's a lot of. Like, it's, no, it's, it's hard. Like, that's why even people that, you know, are, like, up there and they be going through, like, some crazy-ass shit, like, the, you know, the Illuminati stuff and stuff like that. Like, I can't imagine. Yeah, of course, you know, people are like, oh, well, when you get to that point, that's when you know. But I can't ever imagine. I'm so, growing up, and it's usually, whether I moved to a lot of places, you know, seeing how the, you know, quote-unquote, the grass is greener on the other side type shit. Like, yeah, it's cool, but, like, this is my foundation, so I'm very, like, in a sense, low maintenance, not low maintenance, but it don't take a lot to like make me like, oh, you know, like, like, and that's not even like, like hating or anything like that. I just, just because somebody's like this or that, like, I don't really care. Like, you know what I mean? Like, cause at the end of the day, that doesn't get me nowhere. Like I still, I'm on this path. I'm on this journey to where like, I gotta get right. Like, you know, I'm freaking. So it's, and it's dealing, like I said, I early on, like, within the first year I noticed and I would hear stories from people about like trauma they would go through and like this or that. And anybody that I started off with besides a, like two or three people, um, that they've been with me, like, you know, my best friend, like Poppy, like, you know, shout out to her. Like she's been there since literally like the beginning to the end through like all my, like, like relate, like these relationships that like she got into also because she's like my friend, you know? And then like, some shit happens, but like she's still like, like obviously right there. Like nobody's really not cool with her, you know what I mean? Um, and she's been able to always just hold it down. Like you saw it, like never give a fuck, never shows, never ever. Like there's only been a couple because I've just over and, and time and time again up until like I kind of just went off and veered off by myself, and I was like, I'm just gonna focus on me and who I am as an artist. Um, there's a lot of like animosity and like people hating on each other and it's weird. I don't, I don't really, I mean, especially it's when it's like the girl guy thing, you know, and especially when your mindset's kind of like, you're just kind of doing you and you're not really worried about anything else. You're like genuinely hopeful for whatever, you know, come up, comes for the other person. But you know, people really just don't want to see, people are just in a whatever place they are in life. And like, they just don't want to see other people, people win for whatever reason. And, you know, dealing with, you know, I'm handling business in the sense of like music videos and payments and, you know, you, you cop an attitude, especially being a girl, like you say something the wrong way to somebody they're like, oh, I'm gonna fucking give you your video. And you're like, oh God, dude. You know, <laughs> so it's taught me how to know, you know, time and place, when and where to do things and like when and where to blow up and tell somebody, oh, I was kidding, tell somebody off. No, but, <laughs> but, um, yeah, like I can honestly say, I ain't gonna lie in the beginning, like, Anybody who has some shit to say, like, we were going to go back and forth, like, uh, it's too much, like, I realize it's just too much energy, like, it's crazy. And then those people I see, and not to say, like, I've advanced or, like, I'm somewhere totally different, but in a sense, yeah, you know, like, I am. And the people that I've met and the connections I've made, whether I utilize them or not, they're, they're there. Like, and those are the type of relationships that I establish with people just being, like, real, you know, and just being genuine. And when I look at a lot of the people that I even gave the time of day to, you know, a couple years ago, it's like, y'all ain't even doing this shit for real. And I'm over here even wasting my time and my breath when, like, you ain't even about it, you know? Like, I'm really trying to do this thing. Whatever's going on in my life and whatever the fuck I'm dealing with, like, I'm still trying to keep this shit going and, like, doing it on my own. It's a, it's a lot, but it's fun. It makes it a lot, a lot more fun, you know? But it definitely isn't as glamorous. Definitely lose out a lot of people. Um, what about like people that you've met recently or, you know, in your time in the music industry that you have like a positive relationship with? Um, 
There's been like a, a lot of dope people that I've been able to work with, but I mean, off the top, um, for sure being around Lush, Lush one, he's a super dope person, um, good people all around, um, even music and, you know, you know, not music, he's, he's good, but for sure, um, I like Bozo, Uncle Bozo, <laughs> he's a, he's a character, but he's very, besides music, um, like we had like, we're supposed to get together, you know, before we actually dropped the song that we, we dropped when he dropped his album, um, we had recorded a song like way before that. And yeah, just for whatever reason, you know, just me lagging and stuff like that, I for sure wouldn't say him, but um, our kind of like friendship grew like throughout that time, you know. Um, but he's always been super dope. Like, I remember even when we recorded, I used to always see him like in the studio, like all these fools and shit. And I was like, all right, this fool's gonna come, we're about to get fucked up. And then like, I remember I was like, yeah, in my car, and I was like, what's up, mija? And then I like turned around and I was just like, he was just by himself. And I was just like, all right, me and you, huh? <laughs> like, like he, he's, he's dope. Like he, you know, like for whatever reason, he just felt like that was, you know, that's what, you know, how the session needed to go. It felt like real person, real, you know, real dope. Wasn't like any distractions, it was just us. But that song never even came out, you know? Like, whatever I was feeling was like hesitation, whether it be the song in general. But like I said, like our friendship grew. He called me over there to fix his sink with his girl. Um, and then after that, I don't know, it was just kinda, kinda staying in contact. He kinda always, you know, keep me in mind. He was real, real dope at like kinda inviting and places like that. I was able to go to like his King Lil G video with him, them two, when they performed, there was a gang of people there. But just besides that, like straight up, like I'll go and like ask his full for advice on like a bunch of bunch of shit, you know. He's he's super sh straight up. That's what I call him, Uncle Bozo. He's good people. I feel like from what he's kind of come from, it's it's dope. And our how we even came about in general, like I, I was like living in my me and my homegirl had an apartment. She's all I didn't even know this bitch is gay, and she's all. I'm gonna have some girl move in. And I was like, all right, like, that's cool. And then she's like, oh yeah, like, she, she's coming from like a halfway house. I was like, oh, okay, like, that's cooler. <laughs> and then she's like, oh, but before that she was in prison. I was like, all right, like, I'm not really tripping, you know? <laughs> and then she ended up being like one of, of a million siblings, but she had a bunch, um, she had a gang of siblings. So after she moved in, um, everything went terribly wrong. No. <laughs> but she had a, she was like one of 12. But pretty much where Bozo's from, they're from the same, you know, neighborhood or whatever. And uh, I got really close. I definitely wasn't close with, with my homegirl's girl, for sure. She did not like me, but, you know, that's her problem. <laughs> it's definitely her. But um, she had a younger brother that I got really, really close to, very close to, extremely close to. Um, and, you know, like I said, him, they're, they have a lot of siblings, but, you know, they're... There's only like, you know, her, and Daniel, and um, I think like another sibling. Only like three of them. They're they're kind of like more in the neighborhood, you know, be around like Pico, you know, when it comes to all that type of stuff and you know, gangs and and that like, they're the only three out of all their siblings. And we, me and his kid, like we gravitate towards towards each other. And he used to always tell me he's like, he's like, oh, I got a homie that be that be rapping. You know, and I was just like, oh, okay, like, that's when Bozo was, like, coming up. I think he did, like, a video with, like, Joe Moses and stuff like that. And he was really, he was really coming up. Like, like I would see him, this fool always invite me. Like, but I remember one of the videos he went to, this fool came knocking on the window. Like, it had keys and everything. This fool came, no wallet, no keys, all out of breath. Like, let me in, let me in, knocking on my window. And I was like, what the fuck? So I kind of was like, nah, bro, I don't want to go, dude. I'm not trying to get in trouble and shit. I already get enough trouble on my own. I can't imagine. I'll be right there like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's how I kind of heard about Bozo. Like, and, um, you know, I don't regret, like, not going at that time because it's like, whatever. Our timing was how it's supposed to be. But, yeah, that's how I even, like, heard of, of Bozo. It's crazy because Daniel just always talk about him. My little homies just always, always talk about him. And he would tattoo. So, like, 
when I when he like came, cause like she moved in like all her siblings, like everybody there, like it's sleeping in the couch, taking the cushions out, making a bed of that, and sleeping inside the couch. And then like there's a gang of women, which is totally fine. They're all like dope. I mean like besides their sister, like yeah, that's only <laughs> only one, but they're all like they're all dope as fuck. Like their upbringing and their story was was crazy, you know, just like a bunch of different all these siblings like just like knowing and learning how to survive and like you know, like on their own. And like Daniel, Daniel would tat, so he would just like tap me like a lot of the work that, that like little fill-in work he would do, and then we would just be talking and talking for days. And then he would always tell me he's like, dude, you need to meet him, you need to meet him, like you need to go with me, like I hook you guys up, I'll connect you guys. And then it's funny, my my little homie like he got locked up and he like disappeared for a little bit, and then we started connecting me and Bozo like, after I reached out to him, I reached out to him like for sure. So I saw, saw what he was doing. I just like the way he comes. Like people, I guess, can say like he might stir up trouble or like he's opinionated and stuff like that. But like when it comes down to foundation, he's just such a good person. Like all around, like family guy. Like he is exactly how he says. You know, like straight dad. Like family man. Like his girl's cool as fuck. Like his kids. Like just how he has everything. Like I said. Like when I go, I like it's very genuine. You know. Like so, I feel like the song, the song that ended up coming out, like it was just way better. Like I said, timing. But he's definitely, uh, every every artist I've worked with, there's, you know, a reason. Um, but he's he's definitely somebody that besides just, you know, the music and that's it. Like, I soaked up a lot of shit, you know, besides music from him, you know. That's dope. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, you were the one of the, well, we, we met at Bozo's show, right? Yeah. Um, you were the only person, only girls that performed there and the only girl on his album, right? Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Um... Yeah, honored to be honest. Like, it was real dope. Like, he's real all about like bringing people up, you know. So, the show was tight because the show was like people that were featured, you know, on his album. You know that, like, he, like he's he said it himself like he believes in like. So that was that was the the whole point. He actually was supposed to be. He actually was supposed to have a show himself. With like you know. um I think like, I don't know if it was Drummer Boy or like, I think it's Dr Drummer Boy or Doughboy. I don't know, freaking, I'm sorry, the names are close, but there's a boy at the end, <laughs> the boy at the end, but um, yeah, he's supposed to, I think like King Lil G and like. Oh, the show in Pomona that got shut down mm -hmm. by the cops. Yeah. Oh, okay, so you know, so I have standing. Yeah. But yeah, so I remember he, uh, he had called me and then he had this whole idea, like, you know, and it was pretty dope to see his idea come to life you know there because it's i feel like he's definitely somebody who's you know manifest things like like there's there's no like going back for him for sure i know that you know like so it was it was pretty cool he called me with the idea like early on and then like that's that's pretty much exactly how it was it was it was a it was a really dope turnout like super dope um actually my little homie too i hadn't seen him in forever and i was able to see him there nice. like yeah freaking so it was it was it was fun. It was definitely like I've seen a lot of people. It's it's funny because even if I didn't meet them with Bozo, like I know a gang of people that like, you know, like from his hood and shit. Because when I be kicking it, you know, like with my roommates, or like you know, with my little homie, like I got to meet people, like, and I became cool, you know, like they just naturally, everybody, everybody w was was cool with me, you know. I had no no issues. I mean, it'd be some crazy ass shit going on, but <laughs> other than that, they're they're like good people for sure. I had like no issues. Uh, you definitely tatted up. What are some of your favorite tattoos that you got? Um, honestly, probably like my chest. I have like my last name, and then there's like an angel in the middle that's supposed to like represent me. There's like a demonic hand and like an angelic hand like pulling both ways. So that's one of my favorite, and then for sure my portrait of my grandpa. Um, yeah, I could say. But for the most part, you know, people look and they're like, oh, tattoos, like, even my nana, like, she's like, I stopped all that, or whatever the fuck she says, you know? But it's like, literally, you could look at tattoo, I have nothing that's, like, gang-related. Like, even when I go into, like, jail, they put me, like, in the, like, the gang, you know, like, that type of dorm because of the tattoos. I have, like, SGV tatted on me. I have, like, 210 freeway sign, like, tatted on my stomach. But, like, honestly, nothing on me has any type of, like, negative, like, this is like live, laugh, love, like family over everything, like um, like roses, because my middle name's Rose, like the Puerto Rican boxing gloves, like I have a flower to represent for each one of my siblings I'm supposed to get colored in with. Um, yeah, like even ethnicities, like 
like you know being Mexican Puerto Rican Filipino like Portuguese and who knows what else it's like I'm a mutt that's why I'm all small what does your knuckle say oh it says stop hate which these have oh obviously just the way you see them they're off but I had a little like rough patch and uh I was like, um, fucking with, straight up. I mean, I'm not even going to front. I was like fucking with like M30s and stuff like that. Like the whole fentanyl like thing. But you know, you don't call it, you don't call it fentanyl. You call it M30s, you know? So like literally when I got this tatted, the girl that was tatting, she was like holding my head from like me nodding out and like tatting my hand. And like what I was thinking when I got this, I have no idea. But for sure, like I already have a homie that's like looked at it and he's going to fix it. But at the same time, too, like, just having them, regardless, like, I'm definitely not, like, embarrassed or anything. I could care less. Like, I have some people, like, they make jokes. They're like, bro, like, what the fuck? Like, first of all, tats in the hands are hard to, like, keep, like, the ink, but nah. Um, but it's still, like, it's still, like, a significant, like, part of my life. Like, whether it was, like, a negative time, like, it just shows whatever time I'm at in my life, you know, present. For sure, it's never going to be that bad, you know? What about the, the face tattoo? Um, so the music scene was one of them, and then, um, yeah, people are always funny. So the side of my face, is just says, shut the fuck up, pretty much. Um, so that's what I was talking about, but, like, the impulsive and, like, like being impatient. Because I would just, like, think something, like, go off of, like, whatever emotion I'm feeling. I'm like, fuck it, you know? But I don't, re I don't regret that shit either. It's just funny when people are like, hey, what's it say? And they're, like, all the way across the room. I'm like, fuck up. And they're like, what? I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Because from far, people like be guessing, like, what does it say? But um, I don't think I really get like any more tats maybe on my face. I mean, like, I got like this one, like, here, but like on face, face wise, not even because everybody tells me, but like, low key, like, I was, I, I low key was gonna get tatted, like, I don't know, like, on the side of my forehead or like, like, make the other side even. But then I started thinking about it, I'm like, bro, the more tats I get, it's gonna look up from my far, like, I got like a beard and shit. Like, I'm like, I'm not trying to do all that. So, like, here, like, I think it was, like, cool. Like, probably, if anything, I'd get, like, here. But on my face, probably nothing anymore. I feel like it's a cool little balance just having, I don't even know which side. Yeah. Just having just, like, the little one and then just kind of, kind of, I feel like that's enough. Plus, a lot of people are like, that tell you, please. Yeah. Um, you also, like, I like how your Instagram, you post, like, your regular life, like, your job and your work. And you yeah. travel for work, right? Tell, yeah. tell me more about your job. Um, so, I do plumbing. I don't know. It's so random. But, um... Cause there's like a lot of, like there it's common to see like girls like electricians and stuff because like for sure a lot cleaner work you just i mean still a lot of shit can happen but i mean plumbing oh man i mean whether you're doing it if you're doing commercial it's all new construction so it's like cool but even then like when it gets in the end stages and like you're about to like do like the whole finish where it just looks like you know it's just like an empty drywalled room and then you know shit's just sticking out of the wall to when like you know you put in like all the faucets and like do all that shit like and even then, you know, people start fools start pissing in the in the bathtub. That's why, like, when girls come on construction sites, I'd always be there, and then they'd always fuck it up. Cause the even like music came at the time it did, but like like plumbing and that kind of overlapped each other. And like I said, learning patience and like not being so quick to like react to everything. Like plumbing came in at a perfect time because if I was to react to a lot of the things that like I have to I dealt with in the beginning, you know, whether it be dudes and like you know they're just them, like, something minimal, just them staring, like, there's, like, <laughs> you know, but, a girl here. yeah, like, I, I remember, like, when I, when I started, like, I had, like, fools do some out-ass shit, like, literally, like, like, whistle, like, and I, like, look, you know, like a dumbass, like, oh, <laughs> and then they'd be, like, and I'd be, like, what the fuck, like, what are you doing, like, what do you mean, come over here, like, they'd be, like, trying to hit the cut, like, just because you're a girl, and I'm like, bro, I'm wearing the same exact shit as you. Like, you have to be gay or something. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, I ain't wearing no tight ass jeans. But then you have the, you know, it's always like the women, and they come at the very end. Like, when they when they, you do see girls on a site, usually it's at the very end because like when they have to come in clean, like stupid, dumb, like cliche shit. Like, but they come and then they fuck it up. Like, come with their pink freaking vest on, their pink hard hat. And I'm like, <laughs> why, dude? This is why. But yeah, like I started a lot in like commercial. And then, you know, doing, like, residential or, like, straight up, like, <laughs> you'll, like, call because, you, you know, you have some plumbing issue that you can't figure out. I mean, you, most likely, I feel like you figure it out. You'd be like, fuck, calling an old plumbing company. You should be smart. Watch Google. I mean, watch YouTube video. But <laughs> a lot of people ain't like that, you know. They're just, like, call somebody. 
And, like, I'd be that person that comes in, like, hey, how you doing? Like, when I heard you had an issue going on, like, bid a job, sell the job, like, so residential. Uh, I've done I've done a lot. I've done it for, like, the last seven years, super fucking random. Like, really random, but um, I love it. I mean. Would you recommend it for other girls or people in general to do, to do plumbing? Like, is it good? Yeah, for sure. Like, it could be dirt. Like, it's, it could be nasty. I mean, don't get me wrong, especially when you do, like, already existing plumbing. Like. You know, it's like you're going to people's houses and shit, like you're pulling toilets off. Like, that's like, you know, mm -hmm. everybody been going to the bathroom already for like years and shit. Like, yeah, it's not, it's not fun, you know, but I mean, that's why they got, you know, shit for protective shit for you to wear. It's really not that bad. Um, but yeah, it's definitely not glamorous, you know, like, but it just depends, I think, on the person, your personality. Like me, I can't imagine, like, for sure music shit, like whether it's like technically inside, you know, like, but I can't imagine just like, being in like, like an office or like, I went to school for, for like psychology, sociology, you know, but then I came out and I'm like, bitch, I don't even know how with your record you're going to fucking get, get a job. And then I realized that I don't know how I'm supposed to be like a social worker and take on all the problems of these people when I got so many problems, you know, Thanks. like I wanted to work like as a social worker that would like law enforcement, I'm like, bitch, where? <laughs> They'd be like, you have a warrant. Come on, let's go. I'm like, oh, damn, I got to go kids. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> but, no, but like, I, then I realized, you know, like, I, I could not do that. Like, I'd be trying to take, save every kid and fucking, oh, come on, come with me. And then probably get in trouble for being weird later. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> but I realized, like, and I didn't even know how. So I just kind of came and I was, like, looking for just whatever job until, like, I applied. And then I found, like, a laborer's job. And then some plumbing company I was at the same site. The guy that oversaw the site, he loved me. It was like some older white fool from like Newport Beach that was like an ex surfer. He fucking loved me. Cause like, you know, it's just day by day, like when you're labor, like they could be like, oh, you're fucking 20 seconds late. Fucking next day, you're not there, you know, like whatever. The fucking fool that's actually part of the company doesn't like you, so you're not gonna be there, you know? But this fool did not care. Like, he's like, I don't give a fuck if she calls out. If she misses, she's gonna come back. And I was all running like five man crews. Just literally, it wasn't even running a crew. It was just like literally, they tell me what floors and what rooms we had to clean. Like, just pushing a broom, picking up people's shit, like, pretty much. Like, you know, on commercial side, everybody just throws, the whole site's a trash can, you know? Mm. So, like, literally just going into rooms, doing stupid shit, moving fucking trash from here, right here. <laughs> Dirt from right here to right here. Fucking sandbags. Like, I started from the bottom, like, with the fools that would be like, oh, I've been in the agency for, like, 15 years. I'm like, why? Like, and why are you still complaining, you know? Like, if it's been 15 years, I kind of, like, watch the electricians and the plumbers because they're, like, real diverse with, like, ethnicity, age, you know? And then I would just kind of talk with the guys because I never talked to nobody. I put headphones on, just my room. Like, ha, ah, ah, ah. Just act like I didn't hear people all the time. But just keep pushing, you know? Yeah. Like, so, yeah, the plumbing company offered, like, me a job to be their inventory girl. And I was like, no, no, I'm going to learn. <laughs> so I was lucky. I was lucky to have, like, uh, guys that helped me. Like, I have this uh, one, one friend. I, have, I don't talk to him as much, but it's still, it's, I love him to death. I used to call him Hefe. And he said, I remember I put it like on a water heater and I didn't even know. And he stayed on the phone with me like the whole time. I'm like trying to get like all the, like all the parts for it. I have no idea what I'm doing. Just fucking straight winging it. But I would not give up. Like, cause after my first job, dude, I would go and I'd be able to talk myself through an interview. And then I'd be like, oh shit. I don't know how to do this shit. <laughs> you know, I'd be right there like, damn, why you been, why you been working on that for like four days? I'm like. Why you been at, what, for what, for four days? <laughs> but, dude, trial and error, like, I fucking learned, it didn't matter. Um, but yeah, that's a big part of, big part of my life. Well, and say, um, like, what's next for you, like, as far as, like, maybe, fucking piece of shit, fuck up. Uh, <laughs> what's next for you, like, as far as music, or maybe even, like, in your, your job and shit, like, what do you, what do you, what are you striving for next? Like, what's a big goal you're looking for to complete? Um, I want my job to fucking not be my job anymore with music, but obviously it's there to fund, you know, this shit's, anybody who would come in and just think that this is, this shit's free and, and stuff like that, and it doesn't cost money, and you're, you're gonna be so good that it's not, no, it's, it's, it's not, like, you're, you're lucky enough to where somebody fucks you so much, and like, you know, somebody like a producer say you get beats off of, like, and, and they give you the first one free, like, that's great. Like, be grateful for that, you know? Like, willing to take copyrights off and, you know, so you can, you know, modernize from whatever you're putting out, whether it be a music video, whether it be this. I've been super lucky. Um, 
when I first first started at producer Converging Sounds, still if, if I was to hit him up or just like DM him, uh, we'd talk like normal. I'm sure he's definitely not from anywhere like the United States. Um, a lot of these producers, a lot of them early on that I've, like connected with, definitely aren't from you know around um, around here, but. You know, like converging, like had me like in his credits, you know, like super dope. And he would just always give me beats. Um, but to say that that's going to be a norm, not really, you know, maybe it being discounted, whatever the case may be, but it's definitely going to cost money, you know. So, um, I mean, with my job, I mean, it's just there to to fund to fund this, you know, like obviously be smart and I need to save and stuff like that. I would love to be able to start my own plumbing company. But it's, it would definitely be taken away from from music, and I, I want to just be able to give music as much as I can. Cause I, I also mix and do all that, like, um, so even even doing that, I, I mean, I get the same like rush, and I love it just as much being able to like mix a song for somebody and like it sound one way, and then like sound you know super dope to where the person loves it and. And like the effort that I give it is just gonna be just like as if it was my own song, you know? So I definitely, I wanna stay and I just know that, you know, after a while, whatever, I don't really, I don't really mind. Yes, being an artist is dope, but even just staying relevant with music, like I definitely, I guess, if it shifts, go more towards, you know, mixing and stuff like that for people, but I don't really see that like going on. I just see this like, me just pushing this shit to you, whether either it's just like, you know nothing else to really push or like i'm gonna be like lefty gun play <laughs> <laughs> tell, me, tell me your uh, lefty gun play story oh my god dude whether he doesn't i'm he better remember dude he better what's poppin it's your boy moses we're taking a second from this episode to bring you a word from our sponsor this episode sponsored by us the lit outlet the best way to support the channel is to like comment subscribe on every episode don't forget the reels on instagram don't forget the shorts on YouTube. Make sure you guys like and comment on everything you see from the Lit Outlet. Also, another big major way you can support the channel is to join our Patreon. The link is down below in the description. You can keep the channel alive by pledging $1 every month. You can also do $3, $5, $10, $20. $10. All I'm asking if you're a Liddy and you're enjoying the content to at least join our Patreon for a dollar a month. Another way you can support the channel is to buy some merch. We got hoodies for 40 and we got t-shirts with this logo for 25 bucks. If you want to support the channel, those are the best ways. But also, if you want to just keep enjoying the content for free, you can do that too. I don't mind. So I want to say thank you to all of our ladies who are watching, liking, subscribing to all of our content here. Now let's get back to the show. Uh, well, I know he's like all popping out. It's dope. But um, like he's... He <laughs> My homegirl, two of my homegirls, I mean, we went out for like a girl's night, whatever. We got all, I wasn't fucked up because I was driving, so I was like, I wasn't fucked up. But we're like on our way back. We're all the way in LA, and my homegirl, and my other homegirl was staying with that homegirl, so they live in Fontana. So they're like all the way in LA. We're like, ah, oh, shmish, what I mean? But we're driving back, and my homegirl's like, oh, bitch, like, at first, she's like, I gotta go to the bathroom. I'm like, okay, we'll stop, like, anywhere, you know, to go to the bathroom. Not anywhere, whatever is open. And then she's like, oh, no, 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 I go to my homie's house. So I was all, all right, whatever, you know. So we we're going, and then we go into, like, this, uh, like, little mobile home uh, park or whatever. <laughs> and then, and then uh, we we're, like, parked in the stalls, like, where, where like, towards where, where his place is at in the complex. And then he, like, comes out, and he's just, like, super, like, headstrong, you know, like, like just like I don't know I think it was a uh, was it but like Kev or whatever on his podcast he was like on 90 I think he was like on 92.3 or whatever he was like with big boy and then he's like he's like he be on, he was like talking about him and talking about how he's a dope person and he's like he'd be on some shit sometimes but you know and then he like started doing like the little movements like I think like now like I'll st say straight up like like there's there's nothing to hate on like you can't hate on a story like that like because when it happens to you like really like you're gonna really be saying some negative shit no you're not you know like and all you can do is be yourself whether sometimes maybe as an artist you're like what the fuck you know like why like what the fuck you know like I when when we met like he was right when he heard right when my homegirl even mentioned that I rap 
he like <laughs> he was real respectful. He said what's up like in the beginning. He was saying hi. He was talking to me. Just it was just and it was like three thirty, almost four in the morning already. And then they were like by his pad. He was like talking about he's gonna be on like a like a like the billboard thing. Like he was like pointing to it for like pro club. And then like I said, freaking. I was just sitting in the car still, like in the, in the driver's seat. My homegirl was passed out in the back. And then my other homegirl, she's like, oh, I gotta use, oh, I gotta use the bathroom. That's what that's where she was. So, so she's like standing outside the car. And right when she mentions it, he dips in the car. And he's like, oh yeah, homegirl, you, you, you rap? He's like, I bet I rap better than you. <laughs> <laughs> and I started, I started laughing. Like, I was just like cracking up. Like, cause it wasn't even like, like I said, like it wasn't even, he wasn't even like saying it like that, like trying to be like a dick, you know, like trying to be all like, you know, like manly and like be like all like flex his nuts. Like, nah, like he was literally <laughs> just saying it straight up. He's like, I bet I'm better than you. And like he started showing me like his music, started showing me like his Instagram, just all up in the window. Like my, every time my girl, my homegirl was like, hey, well, I got his bathroom. He's like, hold on, man, hold up, hold up, man. And then he, he just kept talking. And then somehow I went from like, and went from like that to to some hook that he needed. And I forget it was a sample of, of a fucking song. Like I I wouldn't be able to think of it, but it's a song that like right when you say that it's like start you know doing whatever that he wanted me to do, whatever hook you know, because he wanted me to sing a hook. That's what it was. Or he needed somebody to sing a hook, and then there goes my homegirl in the background. I'm like, bitch, don't you have to pee? Like she's <laughs> all like, oh, Jules can sing too. And then he's like, oh yeah. He's like, well, this is how I want it. And then he starts singing it right and he goes, like, like, I don't remember what it was, but he's like, yeah, yeah, and like doing it. I'm just sitting there, like, just looking at him, like, you're dope, dude. Like, fuck yeah. Like, all right. And then freaking, they disappeared. And then she went to the bathroom for fucking ever. <laughs> but, but honestly, he's, he's just funny. That's all I can, that's all I can remember. And then um, I was on a cipher with Destructive Films. And uh, yeah. Yeah, deciphered it with destructive films, and he had sent us like the little, like this little like like a uh, text of like all the people that are gonna be in it, you know. So I I had seen that he was gonna be on it, and after that like it was like a little small talk, like barely you know just like liking stuff like whatever, and we would like kind of go back and forth and we would talk, and then like one time we were talking and then it led to it led to this night he goes when I when I meet him he's like. He's all talking about this shit. I don't remember how, why he said it, but he was just like, oh, I don't know, man. So many people be DMing me, man. I can't, I can't think because he said, oh, he said that he had something and it was going to be in L.A. And it was at the same exact time I had it in L.A. and all this shit. And I was like, oh, the cypher was destructive. And he's like, that's what, that's what he said. He's like, I don't know, man. He's like, I got so many people DMing me. I can't, I can't keep track of it. And I was like, all right, well, that's cool because, like, I got something in L.A. like on the same exact day at the same exact time, you know, like, and it's a cypher, so... That would be like just coincidence that you'd just be at a cipher, different cipher at the same exact time in LA, you know? So I ended up finding out that it was him when we got the paper or like whatever little text, but he ended up getting uh, locked up and shit. So I was like talking to him because I had texted him before and I was like, that's dope, bro. We're going to both re represent for like the SGV, you know? And I thought it was him and then it was like some girl, like, I, I don't know, it was weird as fuck. Like, she's homegirl, she knows Bozo, so it was really weird. On a separate tip, she like comes up to me, she's like, hey, that wasn't you texting, that wasn't a lefty hitting you back up, like the last time you hit him up. She's like, that was me. I was like, bitch, what the fuck? <laughs> but yeah, he wasn't in it because because he was in jail, I guess, or whatever. Um, and then he came out and then just like, boom. Like, that's all I remember is like, this fool got released and he was out and then just... Phew. That's, I just watch it unfold like day by day, you know, which is like good for him, you know, like like I said, freaking whatever works, shit. Like, yeah. You know? uh, does it make you feel proud that he's from the SGV? Like you feel like it's a good good look for the city? For the yeah, family? that's why I could like, I mean, everybody, right, can like make their jokes and, and, and stuff like that. Like, of course, whatever. But when it comes down to genuinely like, like just how I feel towards like the situation for him, like, I mean, you can't be mad. How can you be mad at that? Like, you know what I mean? Like, X out all the fucking money, X out all that. Like, like even with with his interviews and stuff like that, you know, like straight up, like, cause my homegirl and him are like super close. Like, even though she said he doesn't answer her DMs anymore, <laughs> they've been close for like a, a cool minute, like where he's from too. Like my, my homie that, that came out with that song that dropped Friday, um, they're like from like, you know, like they're all from BP. So like, they're just different. You know, I don't know if his shit was like, used to be like a, more like a crew and then like he's a gang now, but like my homie who came from, you know, they all came from little cliques like from over there. So they know him, they know him for a while, you know. I just got my little, 
<laughs> my little glimpse like that that night but um yeah you you can't be mad he's gotten so much better like like i feel like the way he talks i mean you can't really like be mad at somebody that's just being honest yeah like, straight up you know like so i i mean all all power to him i mean i'm happy for him fuck i mean that's that's dope like i said who who wouldn't who wouldn't who wouldn't want that anybody that would just say something super negative you know well he's already like on this this like high and he's just chasing that shit and just doing like i think i seen him on a podcast and he was saying like he's supposed to have like a netflix movie come out like about himself and shit like that and i was just like bro like from just day to day it's like coming out of jail and especially that mindset you have when you come out of jail you're just like fuck like even if you're just in there for a little bit of time like a month whatever like you come out and it's kind of like get the reset like you're like all stupid because you're in there and shit you gotta like make stop making spreads you're like what am i doing i could fucking make something else like you know <laughs> like so it's like reset you know so for him to just come out and just get her done like i mean like i said it's super dope and being from sgv having some things talked about like ball and park like talked about like super close like it's it's I mean, like I said, you can't be mad. So, I mean, congrats to him and shit. Thank you for pulling onto the podcast. Appreciate you having here and sharing, you know, your story with us and shit like yeah. that. Um, definitely want to have you back, you know, definitely soon and shit like that. But let the people know where they can find you and uh, what you got coming out next. Um, so, my Instagram is probably the best. Um, it's uh, at Jules626. So, it's J-E-W-E-L-Z. And then uh, 626. Um, and, yeah, I mean, for, like, moving forward i'm just trying to have no more than like a week in between like a drop so like yeah if it's every other week um but the consistent drops i mean even just dropping these the last couple singles like back to back to back i mean just you know constantly posting like my spotify and my apple music it you can see such a difference from that consistent drop and like that's what i want because even just from then it just it's like people it's like people are just going to come to your profile it's just because it's like all the new music, you know, like when, you know, before, like I dropping something, but it wouldn't be out yet. You know, I feel like that kind of becomes like, like a routine to where people are like, ah, like I ain't even gonna ask because it's not out yet. You know, like one person I listen to a lot, like these talks are Russ and Russ said for like two years straight every for like every week, didn't miss one week, but on SoundCloud. So he wasn't even like, like modernizing off of it. He dropped like a single on SoundCloud every week and he's like it doesn't matter if you have a music video like whatever like just having the song for you to be able to click and it be out like depending on whatever platform you listen to like that's going to be what's important so that's what, like I'm focusing on and just giving people consistent music not so much gaps in between you know because like I said people forget people forget just because that you know yep. so it's just like with something embarrassing that happens like man we already forgot about that shit you know yeah, yeah, like yeah. we talked about but we forgot we forgot we brought up but we only remember when it's got brought up <laughs> you know yeah so i mean that's what i want to just focus on right now just very like short term like like you know keeping my goals real uh real basic i guess in a sense but also going to be like very um have like a lot of like impact you know so that's what i would definitely work on then maybe like working with you know some other artists being able to come across like some dope artists um People that are lush, you know, Gotham that was just on the new song, the new music video, you know, Ariel, um, you know, my homie Waves, you know, B42, like all, oh, all those, all the people, you know, they, I couldn't. There's a reason why we're collabing, you know, opposed to other people that might have been able to in the past and didn't, you know. So, just kind of focus on that. And like I said, the consistent drops for everybody. Dope. Yeah. Um, so yeah, make sure you guys uh, look out for the consistent drops from Jules. Uh, dropping everywhere like Spotify and Apple Music, right? Yeah, yeah. YouTube and stuff like that. Yep. Um, thank you guys for watching. Remember to, uh, if you have the opportunity to join our Patreon, it's only a dollar a month. You get access to early episodes just like this one. Instead of uh, watching it on Monday like every like everybody else, uh, for a dollar more, you could watch it early on Friday. Um, also, too, we got some merch coming out, some lit out hoodies and shirts. So stay tuned for that. And like I always say, pull up, turn up, stay lit. Let's get it. <laughs>